The Battle of Sardarabad was a battle of the Caucasus campaign of World War I that took place near Sardarabad, modern-day Amafia, Armenia from May 21, 29. 1918 Sardarabad was only 40 kilometers west of the city of Yerevan. The battle is currently seen as not only stopping the Ottoman advance into the rest of Armenia but also preventing the complete destruction of the Armenian nation. In the words of Christopher J. Walker, had the Armenians lost this battle, it is perfectly possible that the word Armenia would have henceforth denoted only an antique geographical term. In January 1918, Two months after the Bolshevik seizure of power in Russia, the Sovnarkom, the highest government authority under the Bolshevik system, issued a decree which called for the withdrawal of Russian troops from the Caucasus front. This moved through the Armenian leadership in the Transcaucasia into a panic, since it removed from the region the only force capable of protecting the Armenian people from the Ottoman Empire which had effectively exterminated its Armenian population through systematic massacres and deportations. The Armenians refused to recognize the authority of the Bolsheviks and attempted to form military units to defend the front as the Ottoman armies prepared to expand eastward. The Armenians attempted to stall the Ottoman advance as they created a small Armenian army to take up the positions the Russians had abandoned. General Devmaz Nazarbekian was selected as its commanding officer and Drastamat Kanayan was appointed as civilian commissar. But in May 1918, just two months after the Brest-Litovsk peace treaty was concluded with the Russian SFSR, elements of the Ottoman Third Army crossed into eastern Armenia and attacked Alexandropol, modern-day Jayamri. The Ottoman army intended to crush Armenia and seize Russian Transcaucasia and the oil wells of Baku. The German government, the Ottoman Empire's ally, objected to this attack and refused to help the Ottoman army in the operation. At this time, only a small area of historical Armenian territory which used to be a part of the Russian Empire remained unconquered by the Ottoman Empire, and into that area hundreds of thousands of Armenian refugees had fled after the Armenian Genocide. The Ottoman forces began a three-pronged attack in an attempt to finally overwhelm and conquer the rest of Armenia. When Alexandropol fell, the Ottoman army moved into the former territory of the Yerevan Gubernia the heart of Armenia. Battle. The Ottoman offensive was viewed by Armenians with foreboding. With nowhere else left to retreat, they decided to make their stand and prepare for the upcoming battle. Catholicos Javorg V ordered the church bells peal for six days as Armenians from all walks of life, peasants, poets, blacksmiths, and even the clergymen, rallied to form organized military units. Civilians, including children, aided in the effort as well, as carts drawn by oxen, water buffalo, and cows jammed the roads bringing food, provisions, ammunition, and volunteers from the vicinity of Yerevan. Acting under Minister of War in Vapasha's request, Marali, Colonel, Kazm Karab Kabezai Caucasian Corps and Merlivia Kubshevki Pasha's two Caucasian Corps put into action in the direction of Karak Eliza, modern-day Vanadza, Sardarabad, Tiflis, modern-day Tbilisi, and Yerevan on 20 May. While Karak Eliza was selected as their main target, Tiflis and Yerevan were to be kept under pressure. The operations of the southern flank were given to the I Caucasian Corps and the task of capturing Karak Eliza was given to the two Caucasian Corps. The Ottoman force reached Karak Eliza on May 20 without resistance. Only a single combat action took place near the village of Kazakh. The detachment commanded by Zihni Bey, that advanced forward in Sardarabad area, reached the station of Alagats, modern-day Aragats, and line of Mataka. On May 21, the detachment of Zeni Bey defeated an Armenian unit composed of 600 infantry and 250 cavalry, and then took Sardarabad. From there, their forces started advancing toward Yegegnat. Armenian General Mofsis Silikian ordered elements of the 5th Armenian Regiment under Poghuzbek Pyramian, a reserve guerrilla unit, and a special cavalry regiment to check the advance of the Ottoman army. An offensive was launched on May 22 and the Armenian forces were successful in halting the Ottomans in their tracks and forcing Yakub Shevki Pasha's forces into a general route retreating nearly 15-20 kilometers in a westerly direction. The Ottoman command, however, 
was able to recuperate from its losses and reorganized its forces near the mountain heights on the northwest bank of the Arax River. Repeated attempts to cross the river were met with fierce resistance by the 5th Armenian Regiment. On May 24, several more skirmishes took place between the Armenian and Ottoman forces. However, Attempts to dislodge the Ottomans from their well-entrenched positions the following day by Pogazbek Pyramians and other commanders' forces were met with failure. On May 27, an Armenian force commanded by Colonel Karapit Hassan Pashayan performed a flanking maneuver and struck the Ottoman positions from the rear while the rest of the Armenian forces pounded the main Ottoman positions. An Ottoman force based in Talin was sent to alleviate it by attacking the Armenian rear but it was unable to change the outcome of the battle. Suffering heavy losses, Ottoman commanders ordered a general retreat as the surviving elements of the Ottoman army were put to flight. Aftermath, with the Ottoman forces in a full rout, General Silikian wished to press on his advantage with the hope of dislodging the Ottomans from Alexandropol and Kars. But, almost immediately, he was informed of the ongoing negotiations between the Ottoman leadership and the Armenian National Council in Tiflis and was told by Corps Commander Tavmaz Nazarbekian to cease military operations in the region. Though members of the National Council were widely criticized for issuing this order, at the time, this decision was carried out on account of the fact that the ammunition stores had been all but been depleted and Ottoman commanders had received fresh reinforcements. The Ottoman defeats at Sardarabad. Bashabrin, and Karakaliza staved off the annihilation of the Armenian nation, and the victories here were instrumental in allowing the Armenian National Council to declare the independence of the First Republic of Armenia on May 30th, retroactive to May 28th, though the terms that Armenia agreed to in the Treaty of Batum, June 4, 1918, were excessively harsh. The little republic was able to hold out until the Ottomans were forced to withdraw from the region with the end of World War I in late 1918. Legacy and Memory The Battle of Sardarabad holds a special place in Armenian historical memory and is often compared to the 451 AD Battle of Avare. Leaders of the First Republic frequently invoked the name of the battle exhorting their people to aspire to the example of those who had fought and participated in it. The battle was seldom mentioned or given little significance in Soviet historiography until after the death of Joseph Stalin. In the mid-1960s, a number of Soviet historians began to highlight its importance, as well as that of Bashabran and Karakaliza. The Soviet military historian Evgenia Flachuvit, for example, emphasized that these battles, fought by the Armenian Dishnek forces, helped slow down the Turkish advance on Baku and helped relieve some pressure against that city. Notable Soviet Armenian literary figures such as Hovan Shiraz and Parui Javak, whose work Sardar Rapat was turned into a popular song, composed songs and wrote poems that lionize the Armenian fighters. Ivan Bagramian, a marshal of the Soviet Union and himself a participant of the battle described its importance in the following manner. The significance of the Battle of Sardarapat is great. If they, the Armenian forces, did not defeat the Ottomans there, they would have proceeded to Ichmyadzin and Yerevan, nothing would have remained of Armenia, nothing would have been saved. The Armenians won and, thanks to them, our people preserved their physical existence within the current borders of Armenia. After the commemoration of the Armenian Genocide's 50th anniversary in 1965, Soviet authorities agreed to the construction of a monument and park dedicated to the Armenian victory near the site of the battle. Architect Rafael Israelian was commissioned to design the monument, which was completed in 1968. The Battles of Sardarabad Bashabran and Karakalizu are collectively known as the heroic battles of May Armenian historiography, Mayizyan Harasamata, 